So I'd like to get started. I'd like to welcome um, all of our South Florida HIMSS members to this incredible uh, webinar. Uh, we're going to discuss returning to work, the new normal, um, and with this pandemic and everything that's gone on, um, what is normal, right? What What is working normally look like uh, in 2020 with the pandemic? So that is the premise uh, behind collaboration and, and working with teams that we're going to discuss today. So thank you for joining us for this. Um, I would like just to remind all attendees to please uh, mute your microphones. Um, that will be very helpful as we go through the presentation. And I'd also like to let you know that this session is being recorded. Um, so if there are any challenges with being recorded, um, I would suggest you um, may want to uh, drop off of this go to meeting. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the president of South Florida HIMSS, Oscar Perez. Oscar, take it away. Thank you, Janine. Uh, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Oscar Perez. I'm the vice president at Memorial Healthcare System, and I'm also the president of South Florida HIMSS. Um, thank you all for joining today. We have a great, great topic and great speakers today to talk a little bit about what this new normal is going to be like when we get back to work or, or stay remote. So uh, I'm really looking forward to the, the conversation today. But before we uh, kick it off to them, I just wanted to, um, you know, let you know a little bit about South Florida Hymns. I know uh, many of you are members, uh, but uh, we, um, we, we try to put on these events to provide you a lot of value and content and educational, um, timely and educational content for for you all and so we hope you uh continue to join us and so we have quite a few different events coming up so if you come to our website you'll you'll see what those are if you also want to participate or volunteer uh, and be a part of these committees that help set these events up uh, we also have information on our website for that um, i also want to thank our our chapter sponsors nutanix kpmg and and dell technologies for for their support which brings some of this wonderful uh educational content at no cost to our members so we really appreciate that. And uh, without further ado, um, I'd like to hand that out back to, I guess, Janine, you know, or to Grant. I'm not sure who it's going back to, but so it, it would be me. <laughs> it would be me. So thank you, Oscar. Um, at this point, I'd like to introduce um, one of our speakers. His name is Victor Reznicek. He is a principal uh, in KPMG's HR advisory practice. He's got more than 20 years of experience in HR transformation technology and, and operations and has 18 plus years of industry focus um, in healthcare. Um, and Victor's gonna take us through, through um, our journey today. So Victor, thank you. Thanks Janine and good morning and afternoon folks. Thank you for making time. Uh, look, we know how busy you are. We know that uh, many of you are probably trying to figure out how to get uh, your day job done even while participating in this event. So we're gonna keep it one, uh, useful, make sure that the information we're sharing you, with you is applicable and you'll be able to take it and hopefully apply it today or tomorrow on your job. Two, interesting and three, fun. And uh, knowing that I've got Mary Dolan, and Jerry Goodman joining me this morning and or slash afternoon. I know it's going to be all three of those things. So with uh, without further ado, let's jump in. And let me just make it clear. What we're going to tell you about is the South Shore Health uh, Workday Implementation Story. And we're going to start the, the tape in March when uh, I recall speaking with the CIO at South Shore Health about this real possibility that we may need to support both the go live and then the post go live, uh, as we call it, hypercare, completely remotely. And I, I remember speaking with Mary Dolan, the um, executive project manager, and the answer was simply, there's no way that that will work. And uh, Kara, uh, the CIO echoed that. She said, look, I've been doing this a long time. I know how to bring a new system live and you have to have a team on site. That's the only way it works, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, so March 11th of this year, I was uh, 
uh, on an airplane, getting ready to take off. Um, Kara calls me and we talk about this very thing. And she says, look, somehow, even with all of the COVID, you guys need to figure out a way to be on site. And I said, look, we know this can work remotely. Uh, we've done it in parts remotely before. And I kind of described a little bit how, and she said, I've not ever done it successfully before. Why do you think this will work? And I said, one word, the cloud, I guess that's two words. Um, and she paused for 10 seconds and didn't say anything. And I could see her rewriting in her mind the entire script for how you go live and how you support a system post go live in a remote environment. And at the end of that, she said, okay, let's try it. And from that point, we shifted it completely away from, there's no way this will work. You've got to figure out a way to get your whole team on site to, okay, so how do we make remote work? And that's really what this session is about. And I'm excited to be joined by Jared Goodman, who is the engagement manager from front to back, and by Mary Dolan, who was the engagement leader, executive leader for South Shore from front to back. So you have the true authorities on what it takes to both go live and support a system in a remote uh, capacity. But before we start the, the, the storytelling, we'd like to get to know you a little bit better. And for that purpose, Jarek Goodman is going to present some Poll Everywhere questions that we'd invite you to answer. And we'll jot down your answers and we'll try to incorporate what you've told us about yourselves into the South Shore story. Step one is to pick up your cell phone and to text KPMG ERP to 22333. So I'll give you a second just to do that. And once you do, once you do that, you should start seeing the questions appearing. Okay. So here's your first question. How many of you have undertaken a big project since COVID-19 and done the work remotely? Wow, okay, uh, we've got a 100% no so far. Uh, very good, we'll give you another minute or two to, uh, to respond here to see if anybody else is, has a different experience here. Because if the answer is no, then boy, what Mary's about to share with you will be all kinds of in interesting and relevant. Okay, anybody else? Okay, so no it is. Let's move to the next question. <laughs> Here's the second question. Um, if you've answered yes, which nobody, was the project successful? Um, and so if anybody didn't get a chance to answer the first question, but really had a yes response, please go ahead and, and respond here to this question. If you did say yes, was the project successful? And I see we have a comment, um, and I've actually been putting in some answers too. This is Mary. Um, I'm not sure. Are we seeing the responses? Um, it looks like somebody else had said D to the previous question. And for this one here, I put A, um, which we'll talk about, but I don't know if there's, if you all are seeing the I'll, responses. I'll shift. Yeah, because I was testing it myself, Mary. We may have, may just not be working at the moment. So. Can you guys see this presentation? So I had a backup one set up just in case. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Okay. So we... We're testing the work remotely, right? We are. <laughs> Live in the dream. Whether or not I've tested it before, but... Um... Okay. So... And maybe you can just tell us what the results are so we can keep uh, keep rolling here. Uh, so we had one no, and we had certainly another yes, other. Um, any other uh, responses to this question, Jerry?
There we go. We're getting some more answers now. <laughs> we are, okay. All right. The joys of virtual. Um, yeah, they're not coming up yet, so they may be just coming up on your screen. You can tell us what you're seeing there, Jared. Oh, you guys do, don't see this yet. Okay. No, um, no. So, sorry. We have about 20% are are saying yes, uh, they have implemented the new ERP or EHR technology over the course of the project. There's another that uh, about 60% are saying yes, other, so I'm interested in you know what some of those other technologies that are being implemented are. And then we have one no, or 20% uh, are saying no, so it looks like that's probably one person. Got it. Okay, so the second question, is for those of you who responded yes, how successful was the project? And for those of you who are responding, and Rachel, um, thank you for typing this in. It looks like if you go to the web address, so the pollev.com backslash KPMG ERP, that is working. Just keep that in mind. Jared, what's coming in? What does it look like? So far, we have 75% have said it's been highly successful, uh, and 25%, oh, it just changed, 80% highly successful, and 20% are saying moderately successful. Well, I think we may just turn over the reins to the audience then, because hats off, folks. That's <laughs> great to hear. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you figured out the secret sauce, so we'll, we'll see kind of what your uh, experience is compared to that of South Shore. And please uh, feel free to ask questions as we get started here at any time. We wanna really make this interactive. Let's ask one more question, Jared, and then we'll get right into the presentation. Okay. What was the biggest challenge? This is one of those uh, word responses where you can just type in the word that best represents the challenge that you faced. And you're kind of ahead of us here, Jared, but uh, the, the again that we'd like to answer is what was the biggest challenge in your, in your uh, yes answer? What made it uh, challenging? Was the word cloud forming on your screen there, Jared? It is not. <laughs> um, sorry, I think the, the go to meeting sharing is slowing down what you all see versus what I have. But. Well, we'll come back to it then. As folks are populating our answers, uh, we actually had a similar issue happen yesterday where the answers appeared about uh, five minutes after the question. So without further ado, let's turn it over to Mary to tell us about how South Shore Health made their Workday implementation successful going live in April, even right in the teeth of COVID. Mary? Yeah, so thanks, Victor, um, and thanks, everybody, for having me. I'm super, super excited. Um, I hope I'll be seeing more of you. Um, you might be saying to yourself, where is South Shore? I've never heard of that health system, uh, especially if you're in Florida, uh, and that's because we're not. We're located uh, right outside of Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I will tell you that I have since uh, relocated down to Florida, which I'm very excited about, and that's where I hope to uh, meet many of you. I'm gonna. I'm living in Naples, Florida. I'm here now. I start my new role at NCH Healthcare System um, in uh, on Monday. So I'm very excited. And thanks for having me. And don't worry, South Shore is well aware that I'm representing them today. Yeah. Um, they're happy for me to do so. Um, they are a. It's about a 400 bed hospital. Uh, like I said, located outside of. Um, 
Ma uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Um, we do have an ambulatory footprint um, as well as a home care and hospice program. Um, and I don't, the slides are like flying through. I don't know if anybody else is seeing that, but they're like, it's rapid. Um, yeah, I think there's a big uh, delay, Mary, with the go to okay. meeting. Uh, okay. So no worries. I'll try and get working if you, if you could speak to it. Yep. That's all good. So um, we're a relatively small um, health system, if you will. Um, but uh, we, over the past, um, we have about 900 medical staff. We have about 6,000 colleagues. Um, and then we have many, many volunteers um, throughout the health system. So that's kind of the makeup. Um, and then we are a level two trauma center. Um, and we're one of the busiest uh, in the state. Uh, and that's because we are the only trauma center located um, between where Cape Cod is, if you're familiar, and where the city of Boston is. Um, so we get all that thorough traffic. Um, so with that, and I, I won't spend too much time on the organization itself, but I figured we could talk a little bit about what what we experienced, and, and, and many of you on the provider side will appreciate this as well, um, with COVID-19, right? So um, eventually when it gets to that slide, um, you're just going to see some pictures. So in healthcare, we're, we're ready for the unexpected. That's what we prepare for. That's what we're ready for. Um, and we have this mantra of expect the unexpected. Um, and obviously the news and the media coverage, they showcased the amazing work that all of our provider staff did and our healthcare professionals of nurses and doctors and PTs and OTs and first responders, all the work that they did for COVID-19. And I think the side that obviously we know about on the IT side um, is all the work that it took to get us operational, if you will, during COVID-19. And even though we have this mantra of expect the unexpected, it definitely was different, I think, than many of us were used to. And um, I'm sure many of you experienced this where we changed our game plan, it felt like, every hour. So it would be like, okay, we're going to open a tent here. Oh, nope, just kidding, we're going to move it here. Or, um, and maybe it was well, much more well organized um, at your organizations, but it, it certainly didn't feel like that. But, but somehow, as it always does, it gets done, right? So I think, you know, the first thing I'd like to say is um, for all the folks who don't work in a clinical setting, but it took, um, you know, her, uh, heroics to stand up some of the things that we stood up and got accomplished. Thank you for all the work that you're doing. I know that we don't always get the uh, representation of that, but that that is huge. Um, the work that got accomplished for COVID-19, um, and that you know, I'm I'm super glad that we work in this industry. It's an industry that we have. That's why we have disaster recovery plans and business continuity plans. It's why we plan for the unexpected because we certainly experience that. Um, and even though our plans, you know, there was nothing written down of how to how to do this, we certainly were able to accomplish it. So I'll talk a little bit about, so in my role, so I, I was the executive director of the Enterprise Project Management Office for South Shore Health. Um, and we, while technically reported up through IT, we oversaw all projects for the organization. So once COVID-19, as it became a reality, um, we, our work completely shifted, which I'll show in future slides of, of some of the work that we are responsible for or were responsible for. Um, but when COVID happened, it was an all hands on deck mentality. So we went from, you know, managing work like um, opening a new facility or um, redesigning or redeploying a policy database to now we were um, managing the being uh, Hicks incident commander facilitators and note takers. Um, it was hurry, we need to expand telehealth, um, the business recovery work, and really whatever the organization needed us to do, we were all hands on deck. Um, and same for the IS side or the IT side. So um, like I mentioned before, you know, setting up those tents and the drive-through locations, 
work from home. So as many of you, I'm sure, especially on the provider side, in the healthcare world, if you worked outside of IT, you never really worked from home or that wasn't a common occurrence. And all of a sudden it was like, okay, now everybody's working from home and how do we accommodate that? And do people have the right equipment and um, all that good stuff and, and coming up with decisions that worked for your organization, you know, that the consultants of the world, and if you're a consultant on the phone as well, or, or the vendors, you're, you're known for working at home, you know, that's a, a common thing. Um, and that's not necessarily the case on the provider side. So um, it was kind of standing up that from an operation standpoint and all of the HR work that goes around that as well. Um, and then also Epic is our EMR, EHR. Um, and so that work um, needed to be modified again as it went day to day. So the, the, if you go back once, there we go. So the, I'll talk about this one, the enterprise project management. So this is what our team kind of looked like um, from the PMO standpoint. Um, and they're all different colors. So we have project portfolio senior managers and project managers and project coordinators. Um, and uh, the majority of our folks, so in the light blue and light green, they were 100% basically dedicated to COVID. So all of the work that was going on that was were assigned to those individuals, it was ceased and assist, and um, it's all hands on deck for everything COVID, whether it was redesigning facilities, standing up those tents, everything like that. Um, and all of the work that's listed to the right, so the archiving solution that we were working on, um, expanding mobile integrated health in the community, uh, redesigning the call center, all of that immediately um, got, the brakes got pumped. Um, and I'm assuming that it was similar for most organizations. Um, so if you go to the next slide, I think, um, and then telehealth. And I, I know, again, if you're on the provider side, this was our dashboard. So this is what we started to publish out um, to our organization. The last updates in these were July. So obviously things have changed. But, um, you know, I, I think what's interesting is for years and years and years, we, most of us, and I'm sure most of folks on the phone have been pushing for telehealth, but there really hasn't been um, really any movement on it. A lot of it related to insurance, um, a lot of it just related to hesitancy from the um, clinical side. And overnight that changed, uh, which is incredible and a great opportunity of things that we knew were capable, um, but the organizations and, um, and really uh, some the government programs weren't set up to handle it, but all of a sudden overnight it was we need to stand these things up so again the PMO um, helped drive some of those initiatives to get in front of the right groups that were stood up um, making sure that the clinical folks had the right training that we had the right policies consents all that kind of stuff and it happened within days um, and so it's a pretty incredible feat as many of you experienced because I know you all experienced the same thing um, and for our, our vendor and consulting friends, some of the reason why maybe some of us had questions about how do we do X, um, we're looking for some guidance, but also we're unresponsive in some um, standpoint because there was just so much going on um, at that time. So if you go to the next slide. So I'll talk a little bit about Workday. So um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Workday, it is a cloud-based ERP or enterprise resource management tool where we essentially consolidate all of human resources, payroll, finance, budget, and supply chain into one system. Uh, for South Shore, the primary goal was to really get transparency into all of those divisions and how the organization used those to figure out how we optimize talent and really how we become more efficient. Um, so South Shore was moving from a Meditech environment predominantly um, and Lotus Notes, let your minds explode. Um, that still is a real thing. Um, and so Lotus Notes and paper, we were going to this cloud-based ERP system. And we kept the um, really guiding principle of it needed to be self-service driven. So everybody should be accountable for themselves, their departments, 
Um, and how do we make it so that it's mobile? Because um, in the world that we're moving to, especially um, as we've learned with COVID, uh, we need more on demand and real time action. So those were kind of our guiding principles. And leading up to it, we had been planning for about a year and a half with um, Workday and KPMG that on March 15th, we would go live with human resources and payroll. And then April 1st, it would be supply chain and finance. So th that was kind of our overarching plan of attack uh, for a big bang, if you will, implementation of Workday. So if you go to the next slide, this gives you a little bit of an overview of the products that we implemented with Workday or within Workday. Um, and so again, it was basically all of HR, all of payroll, finance, and supply chain. So if you swing to the next, so timing is everything. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the implementation and what happened with what was going on. So this was a major initiative the organization was undertaking. Um, and, and as I mentioned, we've been planning for it for about a year and a half. And so what I want to talk about is how COVID uh, worked with that or 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 didn't. Um, so in February, you know, obviously we all started to hear more and more about it. It started to become a regular occurrence within some of our daily calls. Um, and really, March 5th uh, was the day that our Hicks Incident Command Center was activated um, and restrictions started going into effect. So it was okay. Originally, it was no outsiders are at the hospital. Um, and then it started to get more and more restrictive. And as I mentioned at the beginning, and I'm sure many of you experienced this as well, um, every hour it was changing. So the restrictions would change or our, we would move locations or whatever the case may be. Um, but we still had a go live and we were still marching towards that. Um, and March 15th was our go live for um, HR and payroll. And then April 1st was the supply chain finance. And I will tell you, and I, I, I have a next slide that I'll really talk about what that meant and what that looked like with this timing. I just wanted to set the stage. I will tell you in full transparency, I had a complete and utter meltdown between the HR um, and the finance supply chain go lives. And I'll tell you why, and Jarrett and Victor are smiling. I can see them because they were part of that epic meltdown. Um, but if you go to the next slide, Jarrett, for me, so the, the implementation itself, um, if, and if you're going through any implementation, it felt like an emotional roller coaster, right? So we were ready to go. So I, we had had our go, no go meetings, even though COVID was a conversation, we were prepped and ready. Um, you know, as healthcare providers, especially on the provider side, we show up. It doesn't matter if there's a hurricane outside. It doesn't matter if there's a snowstorm outside. We're there. Um, and so we had set up our command center as we typically do for major installs or implementations or upgrades. We had a command center set up at the hospital as we normally do. Um, and then uh, quickly, and I think it was about that March fifth, sixth time frame, um, the organization said, well, since we've put restrictions of visitors and you guys are going to have outsiders from the vendor and your partner, you need to move your command center off site. And, and my initial reaction as any project manager is, okay, well, that impacts our budget because it's as much as we would love command centers to be free, um, we, you know, the, the setup and breakdown is, is pretty costly. Um, and so the organization said, you got to do it. This is for the safety of our patients and our employees. So my, my, again, that was the, the start of the emotional roller coaster of, okay, well, now we need to figure out how we factor in that budget. Um, and then the next piece, and I know Victor definitely alluded to this um, <laughs> a little bit ago, um, is Workday said, well, we're, we're officially not traveling. Um, and that was a couple days before go live. And I remember talking to Jarrett and Victor and saying, well, as long as you guys are there, I'll feel comfortable. Um, and there was a little bit of hemming and hawing um, of, of trying to break the news uh, to me that KPMG would also not be traveling. Um, and my initial reaction um, after I calmed down, um, because again, as I mentioned before, we are healthcare and we show up and that there's nothing really that stops us. Um, and so to say, well, we can't do that, um, it, it was a big blow, but we tried to figure out, okay, well, how do we manage those big kind of command centers of people coming and going and reporting issues and showing dashboards? How do we virtual virtualize that? 
um, and make it beneficial for folks and still um, get deployed successfully. Um, and then as we moved into KPMG wasn't coming on site, the we were still coming on site as the South Shore IT um, and Workday HR um, and finance supply chain teams were still planning on coming on site. Um, but then it became, okay, well, now we need to just stagger shifts um, and figure that out to, okay, just kidding, we're going to be completely remote. Um, and again, it became, okay, well, who, does anybody not have a laptop? That, that's how infrequently people worked from home, especially in our support departments like supply chain um, and HR. So I think that that emotional roller coaster of we can't do it we kill we will do it we can't we will um was was huge for us um but i know many of you are are experiencing that as well um in any major deployment that you're doing um so if you go to the next slide i can't remember what's there but eventually it'll get there it's so, a virtual command center yeah. perfect Thanks. Um, so you can kind of see that th this was our second command center, that, that picture in the middle there with people in the room. That was when we had staggered shifts. Um, it lasted for one day and then we went 100% remote. <laughs> and the, the blank room is what you can see there as the second um, command center. But what we tried to do, so we worked um, with KPMG and, and everything, especially Workday, as well as the platform that we used with KPMG to do our collaboration is all cloud-based. So then it was, well, how do we make sure people are actively engaged? So when we're going through cutover tasks or there's a major issue that gets called into the help desk that is becomes a P1, how do we manage that 100% remotely where we can't be you know, up at a whiteboard mapping things out and what, what did we expect and what, what's really happening? Um, and so we came up with a game plan to have all day meetings, if you will, to say, okay, you know, if you have this level of an issue come into you, dial into this WebEx um, and come see me and Jarrett or vice versa um, to figure out how do we get a hold of the right folks. Um, we had daily meetings to cut over, to go through cut over activities. Um, and really it was making sure that, and, and I know many of you have experienced this, but making sure that we uh, actively engage folks. So even though you might not have had a cutover task, um, I would always say, okay, you know, supply chain, we didn't see anything from you guys, but what's on the docket for the next two hours um, and how can we help you? And, you know, what issues have you seen that we haven't talked about? So I think it's, it's having that um, kind of forward thinking to try to get an understanding of, of what's out there. I think, you know, communication has has changed and how we what priority needs to be communicated so in any major go live that i've done and i i manage the epic implementation for south shore as well you know we had daily meetings with executive leadership as well as um, metric report outs of kpis for various areas of the product that was being deployed and even though we had that ready to go with Workday, um, it became, is that the most important thing that we need our executive leaders to be focused on? Or should they just focus everything on COVID? And as long as they don't, there's nothing major going on that they, we need their intervention on, we'll just stay in the background. And so it became more of a what's required. So, you know, we have, I have all these great metrics to say, the majority, over 90% of our um, employee population had logged into Workday, even with COVID going on. Um, and they've taken over 60,000 actions by themselves or as a manager. Those are huge numbers that show a great success, even though COVID was going on. And I think it's because we took the approach to say, okay, what's critical for the organization? Like, do we really need somebody like a, a nurse that's caring for our COVID patients? Do we need them to be worried about updating their emergency contact? Probably not right now. We can worry about that at a later time, but do we need them to go in and validate that their payroll is accurate? Probably, um, you know, we wanna make sure that we're doing the right thing by our colleagues. So I think it was striking that balance and finding that balance. And there were plenty of meetings already happening because as many of you all experienced, we were launching a new system, but we were also dealing with COVID, which came along with, you know, do we need to um, take actions within our HR 
area of furloughs and things like that, and how do we implement those in the system? So there were plenty of, of meetings to interact um, with our executive leadership, but the communication had to shift of what was important to share with them at what times, and those email blasts of the metrics and the KPIs, we dialed it way back um, because we wanted people to focus on COVID and not necessarily the work that was going on behind the scenes. So as you go to the next slide, I will remind folks, feel free, I, I'm monitoring the chat, so if there are other questions that folks have or things that you want us to focus on in the next few minutes, please do let me know. Um, so Workday today at South Shore, um, they're currently deploying Adaptive, which is um, the um, budgeting and forecasting tool. It's gone live. We're in the budget, or South Shore's in the budget season uh, right now. Um, and then we had areas that were that needed additional help, um, which accounts payable, recruiting, supply chain, and security. Um, so you know, I had mentioned before that I had a meltdown between HR um, and payroll and supply chain. Um, and my big thing was that was right as COVID was taking off. And so as many of you on the provider side, our organizations were doing anything and everything and things we could never even think of um, to secure PPE equipment um, and, you know, doing the best that they could. And I was terrified to go live as a project manager. I don't think in my whole career, in my whole career that I've been deploying major systems for health systems, I don't think I've ever been the one um, to say, I'm not sure we should go live. There have been many times where the organization has, um, and we've, um, or, you know, there have been things outside of our control that we've done, but I, I was the one, the organization, um, I brought it to the organization to say, if something goes wrong with Workday and we can't order, you know, supplies, or there's something that the organization needs to focus on outside of PPE, is that going to be okay? Um, and I had a, I had a complete meltdown, Jarrett and, and Victor will tell you. Um, but you know, it, the organization said we've planned for a year for this. We've done the best we could. Um, Workday came to us and said, with KPMG, and said we will back you up 110% with whatever's needed, even if it's virtually. So I think that that kind of rests assured, and I think most vendors um, really during this time, and even still to this day, are working hand in hand with us as the clients to um, make sure that we're supported, to make sure that the care for our patients isn't impacted um, in major deployments. And if you are going through a major deployment right now, especially with COVID, or any minor ones as well, you know, push the vendors to help make sure that there's a backup to a backup to a backup plan because um, it is needed during this time for sure. Um, you know, the, Mary, um, I, I, if you don't mind me asking you a question, I, I remember a story that I think is, is applicable here. Uh, okay. When we were talking to your supply chain group and you, you had you had that conversation with them, I, I remember their reaction to us was, what PPE? We're, we're getting what, whatever we can right now. Um, so I think that led to another conversation about, you know, what are some creative ways that we could potentially order PPE? And I don't know if you want to talk about, you know, what you guys were looking into in that area. I think you got really creative with some technology solutions uh, when it came to supply chain. Yeah, so I, I think one of the, you know, as we were gearing up for like really pr prior to April 1st, um, which was our go live, um, you know, there was this, how do we get our hands on PPE equipment? It doesn't matter the way. Um, and I, I, I can actually remember it was a, it was a Sunday um, and I got a call from the um, CIO on a Sunday morning to say, hey, do you think you can get on a conference call right now with um, folks who are experts um, in Bitcoin? And I was like, on a Sunday morning? I mean, we can try. I, I, you know, I'm not really sure how we go about that process. Um, and so I made a couple of quick phone calls uh, to Victor and Jarrett and others <laughs> from KVMG to say, who do you guys know uh, on this Sunday morning that we can get on a call with our executive leadership team? And so I think it was truly the partnership 
um, with, you know, the vendors to say, how do we just get creative around this? And can we make it work within an hour time frame? Not, you know, usually when, when we go and we say, hey, we're going to try to do this thing, it's, okay, it'll be a few weeks until we turn around X, Y, and Z. These conversations were happening real time, and it was how quickly can we stand up X, Y, Z? Because um, if it's days, great, we'll do it. If it's months, scrap it and move on to the next idea. Um, and it was just trialing and erroring things. So, um, you know, I think that that's really important, um, especially right now, you know, the, the kind of agile methodology of let's just try it, get some things out and we can check and adjust as we go um, is critical, especially with everything going on and, and our world changes hour to hour, it feels like. So I, I think that that's important. So thanks, Jarrett. <laughs> and thank you for joining those calls at, on that Sunday with moments notice. Um, yeah, it was really, it was really interesting. You know, I, I think um, just speaking about using blockchain to order supplies. You know, it was, it was something I, I spent a lot of time focusing on workday. Uh, I didn't even realize was was something we were doing, but we were able to kind of get together, get all the blockchain experts on the phone, and and look yeah. into it. So that was great. I, I'll let you go ahead, Mary. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks. Um, and so there's definitely opportunity, you know, anybody who says the implementation was perfect, they're lying to you. Um, so our implementation definitely had some bumps along the way, and we're still optimizing some areas of the system. And I think that that'll be a continued effort um, over the next few months. So I think we can go on to the next slide. So as we recover from COVID, I think that there's this you know, the priorities have shifted for the organization as a whole, whether it's the PMO and the Workday team or IT. It's the priority is we need to recover from COVID. We need to prepare for COVID because we're going to have spikes. Um, because COVID was such a hit on us financially, we need to find cost savings and revenue generation areas. You know, there, there became additional capital scrutiny for scrutiny, um, you know, if not freezes altogether. Um, the 2021 budget planning process, at least for us at South Shore, is completely different now because of the financial um, way that we are today. Um, and the the shift also was, well, now we need to also stabilize and become self-sufficient in Workday. So we want to move away from using Workday and KPMG for supporting and be able to support it internally. And so we have all of these things that, you know, the organization and the leadership says, this is our priority. So if, if an initiative or a project isn't associated to these items, then we don't want to do it. But if you go to the next slide, and I'm sure many of you, especially on the provider side, will relate. However, there's all these different initiatives that are still ongoing. So there is still, um, you know, I'm, I have to look really, really closely, but there's still the policy management system implementation or the LK implementation or the Verity implementation. Um, and even though those typically are not related to COVID, they're, they're, there's no revenue really implications other than there's a cost associated to them. And maybe long term there will be a cost savings, but it's not going to be realized quickly. Um, you know, this, and this is our dashboards. This is our project dashboard that the IT and the PMO team uses um, that we distribute. But so there were all those priorities that the organization said, if it's not related to COVID, if it's not, you know, revenue generating or cost savings, we can't do it. And yet, as things stabilized over the summer, it was, well, now we can restart all of these things. So, you know, we can go back and we can redo, um, you know, the pneumonia pathway process stuff. You know, we can do the um, medical center implementation, you know, so there are all these different things that then came back up to the surface to say, well, we need to do these now because we were mid-flight and now things have calmed down and everything's gone back to quote-unquote normal. But, you know, as we think, and I, I know I, I did a, a, a interview a couple weeks ago with some folks, somebody asked me, and, and I know that this is the, the, the topic of our conversation, but what is the new normal? Well, I think the new normal is we do the work that we always did. Um, we just tailor it and we, you know, adapt to what is the priority and working with our leadership teams to figure out how do we best support the organization as the needs change, which I'm confident will continue to change over the next few weeks, months, 
even years and what healthcare looks like even. Um, so if you go to the next slide. So another piece of this is, and I know many of you have, have seen versions of this, um, but the majority of us got shifted to remote work very quickly or in some capacity remote, it might not have been 100%, but in some way, shape or form. And so, and, and families were home and schools are not open necessarily 100% in person. Um, and so all these things became um, a new added complexity that we've been kind of exposed to or experiencing like I, I can tell you multiple times that you know we before covid we would be on calls and be saying we can't hear you or those types of things but now they became drastically different um and teaching people the etiquette of when you're on a webinar and you're not speaking make sure you're muted all those things that still we remind people of and those are just a natural and i think the org our organizations are getting better and they're adapting and trying to do the best that they can but all of these kind of and i encourage everybody to use these remote work bingos because they are very funny um but um you know i think making sure that we're continuing to have these items be our new reality i think are important you know i i, I do expect that our proven over the past few months that a lot of work can be done remotely and and can sometimes be more efficient even with um, families at home um, and with pets at home um, because I think people have a difficult time um, shutting down and things like that or finding that 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 kind of line in the sand um, which kind of brings up the you know, making sure that people are, you know, um, doing all the right things and, and really being supported by their organizations to draw that line. So I think, you know, if, if you were to ask me what is the new normal, I think remote work is part of our new normal, maybe not 100%, but in some way, shape or form. Um, and then it's how do we juggle all of the initiatives or priorities that we had prior to COVID and how do we marry that into our new reality of financial constraints, um, you know, the, the potential surges that we'll experience with COVID um, and the tents that we have and that we need to reset up, um, you know, here. I know in Florida, many of you um, maybe didn't notice on that slide, but for us um, in the winter, when we had those outdoor drive-through tents, just like you did, it, it was still snowing for us. Um, and so it was, how do we make sure that we also protect our employees um, from the outside elements, but also protect our equipment from the outside elements. And I know you guys experienced hurricanes during that same time frame. Um, and so, you know, how do we break down quickly and stand it back up quickly, all those things, now get intertwined with the remote work bingo that you'll see up on your screen um and then also how does it marry into the financial endeavors that we'll have today so if you are expecting like a quick answer fix of what's our new normal and how do we live in it i certainly don't have it and i'm trying to figure it out with you guys um, but I think that it's having open dialogue and figuring out what works well for each other in the industry and, and across provider, vendor, consulting side of the house, I think it ensures, I think is going to be super critical. And so continuing to have these conversations and I definitely encourage folks to see what's worked well, what hasn't worked well, um, what have you seen um, that's gone uh, awry, I think are super important. So I definitely, um, encourage folks if they have other ideas and Jarrett and Victor I'm sure you guys can add your experience um, but that's kind of from a high level uh, what we experience on the South Shore side what I expect or I think we'll see as we move forward over the next few weeks and months but kind of well, I, I would build on that just a little bit Mary I think those are really good insights and you know if you if you take the lens back out a little bit and look at the the definition of new normal uh, more broadly, uh, we as KPMG have done a lot of work helping our clients reframe what normal looks like. And there are five areas that I'll touch on just briefly here that describe that new normal. The first question is, how do we manage the risk of bringing workers back to work? Um, 
there's a risk-based framework that we've helped our clients develop along with an app on the phone to answer simple questions that help you ensure that the right individuals are staying home, the right individuals are coming back to work, and individuals who are sort of in an unknown status are brought back to work in a way that's safe, that has them isolated, for example, in a particular part of the, uh, the, the building. So the risk framework is the first new normal uh, element. The second new normal element is the where question. Many of our clients are looking at their entire footprint and asking, which facilities do we really need going forward? Uh, you've seen the, uh, the announcements that some very large organizations are basically saying, we no longer need a footprint at all. All of our workers will be 100% remote. Now, that's an extreme, not in healthcare, but in other industries. Most of our healthcare clients are saying, gee, do we really need that office building? We only had back office support there, or not only, but we had back office support there. What percentage of that population can work remotely? And can we implement new technology that enables us to work remotely? For example, one of our uh, clients in Vermont said, look, we've got hospitals that are spread by 50 miles or more. So we want to create a service center, but it needs to be virtual. So what does that look like? What kind of a phone switch do we need? What kind of a case management system, a portal, a knowledge base do we need to make virtual service center work? So that whole question of where, where do we need our workers is being revisited and many organizations are reducing their physical fit footprint dramatically. The other question was the, the one I just brought up was the technology question. For us to be effective in a new normal uh, environment where people are working from home or working from somewhere other than the office, what does that need to look like? Not only from a connectivity perspective, but very importantly from a security perspective. Uh, is my data safe if my employee is accessing it from their home? Uh, what kinds of additional uh, protection from a VPN to uh, uh, dual authentication, dual factor authentication, what kind of protection do I need to implement that I don't have today to keep my data safe? Uh, program governance is a fourth area that's really essential to the new normal. Organizations that are saying, uh, Things like resource planning. Where do we need people? When do we need them? Uh, it's very different when you are no longer getting in your car and driving 30 minutes, driving home, uh, and, uh, and, and filling up your day with commutes and airplane tri trips and Uber trips and so forth. So the whole question of how do we manage our resources now that we have, in some ways, a lot more time in the day, which brings in the uh, fifth variable, and that is work-life balance. We see many of our clients struggling with the fact that because I'm not getting up in the morning and driving somewhere, I'm not taking a break from lunch and walking across the street, people are working more hours and they are burning out. And so a very important part of the new normal is establishing work-life balance and thresholds. We're inviting employees to schedule time into their day to walk around the block, to go out just like you would if you were in the office and go eat lunch, or at least walk around the, the block and then come back and eat lunch. So those are four uh, or five examples of, uh, of new normal, um, all of which are in flight right now. And if anybody would like to hear more about uh, any one of those five elements of the new normal, uh, we have a, a PowerPoint presentation that provides that overview, glad to send it. Just reach out to Oscar or Janine and we'll, we'll send it your way. Sorry to interrupt you there, Mary, but I just thought uh, unpacking the new normal was probably worth doing. Yeah, no, that's great. I appreciate it. Um, and I think it is, you know, people always read, I don't know how many of you have experienced this, but people read the, the big articles um, like the ones that say everybody's 100% remote. That's, you know, I don't think healthcare is quite there yet um, for the work that we do. Um, it's certainly a conversation we've had multiple times with many of our team members. Um, 
And and so it, it definitely will be interesting though when we eventually do get somewhere near that. Um, but yeah, if there's any questions, I know we only have about four minutes, three and a half minutes left. So questions, please chime in or or use that chat feature. We're all here to kind of brainstorm together. Well, while we give folks uh, opera, I'm very excited to meet many of you, um, hopefully, um, hopefully in person or maybe at more virtual events. Um, now that I'm closer to most folks, I'm in Naples. So I'm, I'm very, very excited to be here with you all. And I hope to join more events with you guys. So thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And let me just say, uh, I've oh, done I have a quick question, Victor. Sorry to interrupt Please. you. Well, let's go to the question. Yeah. So it says, um, what was the biggest surprise of the new normal? So I don't know, Jared or Victor, if you guys want to, I'll, I'll answer from the provider side, at least my perspective, if you guys want to go first. Yeah, I'll go first. It's maybe your answer. And that is, it's possible that there was a perception that there's just simply no way that remote work can work. There was just an assumption that unless we're shoulder to shoulder and looking each other in the eye physically, that there's going to be communication breakdowns, there's going to be dropped handoffs, there's going to be issues that go unresolved for a long period of time. And the reality is we made all that work, in part because of tools like Teams and GoToMeeting and, and uh, uh, online uh, uh, resources, SharePoint sites that, uh, that we could use to collaborate. The bottom line is with today's technology, it is possible. And that to me was the biggest aha. That was the biggest breakthrough. When it when there was a general agreement that, okay, we've shifted from ain't no way to, yeah, this can work, we made it work. That to me was the biggest aha. Mary? Yep. Yeah, so I, I would say similar, very, very similar. I think proving that we were capable of doing a big implementation 100% remote was uh, was enormous um you know as somebody who's done a lot of them I've, I've never seen it done remotely um and i was very hesitant so i think that that was really big i think people um willing to get remote and quickly especially with all the hr implications that go along with that um how rapid it happened i think was probably the biggest <laughs> surprise um and and people's kind of willingness to say yeah we got to do it let's do it and go now um, so I think the, the, the response time, as well as the ability just to do it, I think were, were the biggest surprises. Um, the second question we do, I do see is how will your workflow change in the foreseeable um, future, I guess, in regards to your work slash home balance? Um, I'll, I'll take a first stab at that. So I can tell you, um, we shifted to work from home right during that major implementation. And, and Jarrett will tell you, poor Jarrett was on phone calls with me at like 1.30 in the morning. So I feel like my workflow, ba my workflow balance, <laughs> uh, not probably because he wanted to be, but because <laughs> he's my partner in crime. Uh, but I think, you know, Initially, I did not have work-life balance. I, I just felt like, well, there was, there was nowhere to go. There was nothing open to do. Um, and, you know, my computer was just there. My internet worked great. And I figured, well, I might as well pop on and do a few more hours of work. I think over the, once we started to stabilize, I think I personally, from how I managed it, um, I had to set boundaries for myself to say, I need to shut down at, you know, six o'clock, whatever the, the case may be. I can come back online at a later date, but just for my family um, and, and my ability to keep my mental sanity, um, it was good to not look at a computer screen um, and just get some some break, whatever that was. Um, so I think, you know, it's it's making sure that people feel comfortable with that. And I think you know, as a leader or a manager or supervisor, if you have folks on your team, it's helping your team figure out what they're like. And each person can be independent, obviously, for the work that we need to do. Um, but I think it's figuring out what works best for people and it doesn't need to be the same for everybody. And, and kind of being flexible, I think, is critical. So I would answer it. I don't know, Victor. Yeah, I, 
I just add, you know, uh, after our project, I, I went to another healthcare client that they started their implementation during COVID. Um, and what, what they're seeing with kind of the work home balance shift is, you know, they, they're they used to being 100% in the office and they're starting to head back to the office as well. Uh, but what they're finding is they're, you know, they're, their employees may not necessarily want to be going back to the office. So, you know, they're trying to get everybody to go back in. Uh, and then a lot of employees are maybe finding jobs elsewhere that they're okay with them being remote. So I, I think that's probably the biggest shift is I, I think healthcare really needs to start thinking about, you know, what are some of these uh, flexible work options we, we can deal with? What have we learned during COVID? Uh, what can we, what, how can we bring that into our organization? Do, do we need everybody to come in every day anymore? Have we, have we learned how to work flexibly? So I do think that's kind of the biggest shift that I've been witnessing with, within healthcare and uh, how it's changed the way many of you work. I think that's good. I would say beyond uh, those two considerations is that work-life balance. I think it's really important for HR to take the lead and establish policies that reflect this new normal, that reflect a significant portion of the population working from home going forward. Um, and, and that will mean changes to policies around uh, working hours, for example, uh, policies around uh, you know, expense reimbursement. What are we reimbursing employees for? So those kinds of policy changes need to accompany this move to the new normal. And you know, some of it's financial, but the most important thing is frankly the sanity of our workforce, the mental health of the workforce that's being tested right now um, as they have kids at home who in some cases haven't been able to go back to school, who, are, who might be taking care of an elderly parent uh, who's lost a, a, a provider because of COVID. So there are all kinds of challenges that we as HR need to take and turn into policies and frankly, give grace because when a, a child is crying in the background or a dog is barking or there's somebody knocking on your door asking you to sign for a package those are all experiences that may be frustrating in the old world but are part of the new normal and that's where we just need to give each other grace that's what i would offer is maybe a, a, a non-classic uh, answer to what we need to do to be successful in the new normal Agreed. Well, I know we're a couple minutes over, so I don't know if there's anybody um, else on the him side, but thank you all very much for having us. I hope you have a great rest of the week, and I'll turn it over to the HIMSS folks. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you sharing your, your lunch hour with us. This recording will be available on our website, and please reach out to us if you'd like any further information. We appreciate your support and our membership and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye, folks. Bye.